Thank you, uh, Mr. Nyantino and the members of the Forte State. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have the pleasure to welcome you into the Nairobi Hostel, which is an institution owned and managed by Kenya Hospital Association. And before I proceed, I think it's important to mention to you that uh, we are an emergency organization. We work 25 hours a day, and some of our directors and uh, senior management are handling emergency cases from time to time. When they get an opportunity, they will join us. Because they, we are an institution which works 24 hours, and uh, our main point is that we are a patient-centric organization. So bear with us. Uh, some will come, some may not come. Like right now, I know that our medical director is in London doing something for the Nairobi Hospital. So if you allow me, I will read quickly. I can see the director of nursing is walked in. And this is the lady who makes sure that the clockwork was 24 hours. Uh, if you can come here, Mary. And uh, very quickly, uh, or maybe I just give my press conference so that in, by the end of the meeting, some other will have come so that I introduce them together. So I can go straight to business. I'll read my statement and I believe Nyantino will give you copies at the end. The Nairobi Hostel doctors are not on strike. That's what I wanted the world to know. It's very important for the world to know that because for those of you who don't know, we are the most, most critical and important institution in Eastern, Eastern Central Africa. And uh, we are uh, looking after everybody from Southern Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, uh, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, even Addis. And for that, we don't want any perception out there to imply that we have collapsed. Uh, so that, uh, to tell you the truth, doctors are not on strike. If you have time to pass through our accident and emergency section, it's full, and doctors are working. Members of the Forest State, ladies and gentlemen, over the last few days, there have been reports circulating on various social media platforms and sections of mainstream media. Where is it? Is there? I'm being told I'm not being heard. So I'll start afresh. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of the Fort Estate, our senior management staff, our board of directors, um, I'm now having the pleasure and privilege to read this statement. Over the last few days, there have been reports circulating on various social media platforms and sections of mainstream media with regard to an alleged strike by doctors of the Nairobi Hospital. As a board of management, we wish to inform all our stakeholders, partners, clients, and general public that the doctors of the Nairobi Hospital are not on strike. The hospital's operations are running smoothly and all our staff are working tirelessly. That's why our back is not full, because some senior managers and directors are operating and focusing on patients. Because I mentioned, we are, cent we are patient-centric. That's our meanest job. Now, when I say the hospital operations are running smoothly, we are working tirelessly to have our patients excellent and superior service. Note that the Nairobi Hospital is served with over 600 specialists, consultant doctors with admitting rights, 
in addition to the hospital's doctors. This is the highest concentration of medical professionals in a single health facility in East Central and South Africa. And when I say this, numbers don't lie. The consultants, the top surgeons, the top physicians, the top uh, family doctors are based and domiciled at the Nairobi Hospital. The Nairobi Hospital opened its doors in 1954 as the European Hospital. Before that, from 1952, it was Cecil McDonald nursing home. Then he graduated from a nursing home to a principal hospital. Since then, it has grown from humble beginnings to a modern high technology hospital with a bed capacity of more than 400 beds. Karibu, six outpatient centers and a global medical evacuation center with a medical helper and helicopter facility. The combination of highly skilled medical specialists and modern medical and non-medical technology has placed the hospital in a position to undertake a wide range of routine and complex investigations and procedures including open heart surgery, kidney transplant, trauma share for accidents, orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgery, laparoscopic uh, surgery and uh, <coughs> laparoscopic surgery means you get operated without penetration and very soon in our vision we want to have robotic surgery very soon. Critical care, cancer therapy among others. Today the Nairobi Hospital is renowned for emergency and trauma care, disaster response and clinical care as excellent facilities for providing high quality clinical and nursing care. The Anderson Spe Speciality Clinic opened in 2017 comprises of a variety of specialty clinics including orthopedic, well baby and executive clinics. I urge you the journalists to find time and to our facility to see for yourself the amazing work of saving lives that your dedicated members of staff and management have engaged in a day-to-day -day basis. The Nairobi Hospital takes pride in highly qualified professionals who deliver our mission every day, translating their knowledge and expertise to internationally compliant practices in healthcare profession. Courtesy, consideration, and unreserved respect towards our patients, privacy, dignity, and confidentiality, as time and again helped us earn trust and goodwill. Our dedicated nursing staff provides professional care within a friendly and comfortable environment, ensuring that being in hospital is a more pleasurable and less anxious time for our patients and their families. Here I can mention that we have gone a notch higher as an institution where the, probably the only hospital in Africa who have got an executive wing, which we call not wing, with the presidential facilities. And uh, late last year, we added one feather to the car, we imported double beds for our high-end clients, such that if you get sick, you have the ability and the openness and the, to have you and your spouse coming in over and above our nursing care, your spouse will come here and have VIP treatment and look after you overnight. So that's very rare. Our facilities are world class. 
with high technology intensive care unit and high dependency unit facilitate, facilities and skilled specialists. They also is able to undertake a wide variety of complex medical procedures. The two near, new theaters at the main entrance are world class. World class in that best practices which we borrowed from the COVID center, which is now no longer a pandemic. We are probably among the only hospitals who have an expensive, non-intrusive pressure management where the patient does not have problems of infection. And all these facilities have got infection control protection, which is very important. Uh, so, occupational therapy facilities, new laboratory, we are improving all the time. Our fact, uh, laboratory has been upgraded and we are uh, doing more than expected, but it's a continuous process. Very dynamic, there is nothing static in this institution. We have hydrotherapy facilities, which are some of the best in the region. And uh, we have Western Entrance Building, Office Accommodation, Integration Services in Anderson Building, and Main Laboratory, as the new main pharmacies are all testament of our superior patient experience. Most important, the recent installation of new plants and equipment such as the latest MRI uh, mammography and the fluoroscopy, two new oxygen plants and the construction of an endoscopy tower have revolutionized and redefined diagnosis and treatment in this also. Maybe at this stage I can manage, I can mention that we are the only hostel in the region which has a biplane cut lab already imported. So we have upped the game of cardiovascular management in the region, which is attracting uh, medical tourism. And I'm pleased to report that in the coming, mainly by about April next year, 2025, we are going to have a full-fledged cardiac center, standalone. This cardiac center is going to be a game changer, knowing that currently we have very young people having cardiac problems, very young people, from 40 up to 90. In the past, you used to have a lifestyle diseases like cardiac, only appearing from age 70, when God says that after 70, you are reeling on borrowed train, but now we can attend to you and you can continue with your life. The cardiac center, being advised by our cardiologists, will reduce theater time from three hours to 30 minutes. That's something. And this is the Nairobi store, which has brought that to Africa. Which means the chances of survival when you are in theater are improved by 200%. Patients will not be dying on the theater table when you are at the cardiac center in Nairobi also. You know the World WHO, World Health Organization, they have gotten out the stipend saying number one killer in the world is lifestyle diseases, cardiac being the main, followed by cancer. The Board of Management has initiated the construction of a cardiac center using the only biplane cat lab in the region for launch before April 2025. This shall reduce theater time for cardiovascular operations from an average of three hours in theater to an average of 30 minutes, increasing survival rates, survival rates for theater cases. Because of this long history of innovation and excellence, the Nairobi Osto recently won a top global award for its outstanding leadership in the region's healthcare ovaries, patients from East, Central, and Southern Africa. The best care using advanced technology in an atmosphere of trust, safety, 
and comfort. Last year, the hospital once again scooped another global award for its free treatment access to program for thousands of cancer patients as one of our corporate social responsibility initiative, now currently known as environment, social, and governance approach. Uh, uh, in fact, over the last five years, the Nairobi Hospital has won over 30 excellence awards, cementing its status as a premier health facility in the region. I had the privilege, together with my chief executive officer, to collect this award from Brussels, uh, from the European Health Standards Worldwide. And we scooped that award. But that's not a work, a, work, a work in the park. And maybe one intuition what I want to give you off, offline is that those of you are not aware. The architecture of the institution called Kenya Hospital Association, who are the owners of the Nairobi Hospital, have a very clever policy. And they created their organization all the way in 1952. And they say Kenya Hospital Association owns the Nairobi Hospital. They have a board of management, not a board of directors, a board of management which gives oversight over the executive management, who I'm privileged to have here, a few of them, those who are not emergency uh, attention. And the board of the Kenya Hospital Association delegates its responsibility and surrenders their own power to the board of management. The board of management also surrenders part of their power with the executive management. And because of the wisdom of our predecessors, they said we are non-medical doctors, but we want an institution which will help us. They created within KHK an institution called ASA. ASA means Admitting Staff Association, which means once you, are at, you have the privilege as a medical consultant to practice in this hospital. You are given a privilege which can be withdrawn, just like management are given a privilege which if they misbehave, it can be withdrawn. Such as the board of management, when we sit here, we are given a privilege which can be withdrawn by the Kenya Association who own the institution. And for your information, this institution operates on very strict governance institutions and there is always a room outside. There's always room outside the structures. If I, behave, I misbehave as chairman of the board, there is a structure of getting rid of me. If the management misbehaves, there is a structure of getting rid of them. If the board of management misbehaves, there is a structure of getting rid of them. And if the ASA, Admitting Staff Association, they have a chairman who is called Medical Advisory Council Chairman who runs the clinical aspect of the politics of the hospital. And if the doctors are unhappy with that chairman, they have, it's a legal process in the articles and memorandum of association which can exceed them. But you can't wake up one morning and uh, uh, say my chairman of Medical Advisory Council should go and I take the position. I'm giving you these snippets to understand how we operate. And for your information, the consultants of Nairobi Hospital, they are royal, they follow a certain discipline, and they also have the ability and the privilege to operate in other hospitals. They can go all hospitals they want, but when our patients are here, they come and treat them and attend to them here. Yeah. That, that's something that you must speak. That our doctors, our consultants, are not employees of the Nairobi Hospital. They are called Admitting Staff Association, 
they admit their patients here. They have the privilege to bring their patients here. But they can take their patients to a camp, they can take their patients to Moja Clinic, they can take their patients to Nairobi West, or MPSA, and all these institutions in Kenya. So what I want you to understand before you leave this room, we have no capacity for consultants to go on strike. Because the hospital management system, which I've told you from the trustees, the board, the board of the management, executive management, we have our own doctors who are employed by the Nairobi hospital under the umbrella of Kenya Hospital Association. These doctors are on payroll, and they, um, unfortunately, our medical director is not here. He's in London on duty. Our chairman of MAC, Medical Advisory Committee, who is a top pediatric surgeon, right now as we are talking, is in theater. Otherwise, he will have been sitting here next to me. But we said live fast, health fast. That's why some of the top people are not sitting with me here. When we have our doctors who sit here, I wish Kyoma would have been here by it. They look after the operations of the hostel, but the consultants also bring their patients here. I am now privileged to tell you that I've finished this uh, uh, document, which I believe has been able to give you an express, expression of what goes on at the Nairobi Hostel, run by Kenya Hostel Association. Thank you very much. And I hope I was clear enough not to attract a lot of questions from our brothers and sisters from the 40th state. But if you have a burning issue, which I'm able to, uh, to answer, I have the privilege to listen to you. But before I do, I would like to give any of our uh, gentlemen coming here, I want to introduce them first. And then you may have uh, the privilege, after they make a few comments, uh, uh, to ask a few questions. On, on my right is my, on my left, sorry for that. On my left, I'm privileged to have my vice chairman, uh, my brother, uh, Solomon Misaka, who has a very long CV, much longer than mine. And those of you who, who are aware, Misaka has been a permanent secretary in the Republic of Kenya for many years. Mwaisaka has been in other areas in public service, including at some stage being the chairman of Italy uh, College. And he will mention his accolades. And he has an MBS. Yeah. EBS. He, he has an EBS. Elder, uh, elder of? The Burning Spear. A Burning Spear. I have a Burning Spear on my left. Uh, that's uh, Mwesaka, and uh, uh, next to him is uh, Gilbert Nyamwea, the company secretary, our legal man. On my right is uh, an ICT expert and a director, Buana uh, Geoffrey uh, Etich. is a very, very brilliant computer engineer and both in software and the hardware. He'll give a comment. And on my far right is our Chief Executive Officer, Buana James Yamongo. Now, there were so many people who should have been on the front row, but I told you why they are not here. Uh, then I go to the back. From my right is uh, Felix Osano. But I want to allow the CEO to to introduce his staff, I'm going overboard. Buana James Nyamongo, you will introduce the staff, and uh, after that, then I will give my directors the chance to talk one, two, three.